Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Team Khalid YouTube channel. My name is Renzo, and today we have a brand new tutorial for you guys. And this one is one that you guys have been asking for a lot. Defending. And defending, hopefully this one is going to help you keep more clean sheets, at least concede less goals, which is going to help you win, obviously, more games. Anyways, please, if you enjoy the content, then make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, put on a notification bell, and like always, we just sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, first and foremost, standing tackles. This one is something that you have to master because throughout the pitch, you can make standing tackles and really easily retrieve the ball. You can perform a standing tackle by pressing circle if you're playing the classic, classic button settings. And then within like a meter, let's say two inches of space from uh, your opponent, you want to press the standing tackle. You can load up the standing tackle with a power bar, just like a shot. So if you feel like you're a little bit further out, load up a little bit more power. But then we also have an R1 standing tackle. And this one, like you can see, it's a bit of a heavier lunge, but this also allows you to even uh, tackle your uh, opponent from a further further out distance and also the tackle is a bit stronger so the ball will really bounce well at least off the player's foot um, that you're tackling which is really good this one is especially very effective in FIFA 23 we are getting a lot of success with it with getting the ball when you probably shouldn't So sliding tackles, also these have become very, very good. In FIFA 23, they updated the sliding tackles. So if you see this kind of space and even a bit further out, you can just press a sliding tackle to get a clean, clean tackle in on the ball holder where slidings used to be more risky throughout the pitch. Even this, when you're tracking back, you can literally tackle from, well, sideways, but obviously sliding tackles are a bit riskier. You can perform these within like two meters of space and especially when you're tracking down an opponent. Also make sure to always perform sliding tackles when you're running, so when the player is already sprinting. Because we also have R1 slidings and these ones, we're not a huge fan of it. Um, you can press R1 sliding and what happens is that this, also like the standing tackle, it's a harder tackle which allows you to have the ball bounce even further back <clears throat> from the opponent. But this usually doesn't end up in you getting possession, so we're not a huge fan of it. We don't recommend you using the R1 sliding. You also have double tap sliding, so actually pressing the square button twice. What does this do? This does actually make your player stand up uh, faster after the sliding tackle. So this one is pretty good, but also remember that these double tap slidings are shorter animations. So they usually don't have the crazy sliding tackles that you would have when performing just a regular sliding. So I only recommend you doing the double tap sliding when you're up front with a player. Probably the most important feature is jockeying. Jockeying, you can perform jockeying with L2, but speed jockeying, so a bit faster jockeying with L2 and R2. And I'm going to explain you in what situations you should be using L2 and R2, and in what situations you be sh should be using L2. When your opponent is dribbling and around your box, you should probably go with the L2 jockey, because this allows you to kind of break. Sprinting is, well, pulling, uh, accelerating, I should say, and see it as like a car. Sprinting is accelerating and L2, jockeying, is braking. <clears throat> and if you're kind of in a situation where it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you want to use L2, but you can also accelerate a little bit when holding L2 and R2, which allows you to have the defensive stance that you can see that defenders get when you're using these buttons, but then also be accelerating when you're holding uh, L2 and R2. So let's say uh, your opponent is about to cut inside, you do L2, R2, but he's performing a, or you're doing L2, sorry, when he's cutting inside. And then when he might be doing a skill move to the, uh, the other side, you can quickly jockey over there while holding L2, R2. So 
cutting gaps L2 R2 close by L2. But also a feature, second man press. This one was introduced in FIFA 22 already, I believe, um, in FIFA 21 even. Second man press isn't as effective as it used to be, but when a player is close by, you can see while holding R1, you can actually have an AI player press the opponent. So what we recommend you doing with this feature is having the second man press indicator on for sure which allows you to see what player will actually press the ball and when you're using this make sure that you are selecting a different player with for example l1 or right stick switching when cutting out an other pass because as you can see we're holding second man press here to cut down uh, or to cut the the passing lane with the opponent that he can pass back and then we quickly switch so always use this to cut out one side and cut the other side out with your own player that you are controlling. Hope this makes sense for you guys. Covering runs is probably the most important feature as well and what is important in FIFA 23 is that through balls are really OP so you always want to track the players that are making runs in behind. How do you do this effectively? For example, this situation, what we would do, we would right stick switch now, as you can see, to the center back, have full sprinting and then make sure that we cut out the inside of the uh, striker. Because through balls, if, if they're played on the chest, for example, the player still usually needs to take a touch in which we um, can actually, well, just move over while sprinting and cut out that. But we don't want the ball to curl around us, like you could see here, and just cut it out easily with, I think that was Akanji, by covering the inside so that it doesn't get curled around. This is very, very uh, important in FIFA 23 because through balls are really overpowered. Anticipating passes then, this is what I said with like covering passing lanes, which is very important when using second man press and such. Because here, what you want to do when your play opponent gets the ball like this, he has two options pretty much. Maybe an R1 pass directly into the striker, but that is a tough pass. The easier pass when he takes the touch up is going to be the player that's on top of him pretty much or like not on top of it but on the top side of the player taking the touch and then you just want to switch with for example l1 or right stick switching into that player and just putting pressure by getting in front of that player same goes here when he's cutting inside he has an easy pass open to the striker which is the most dangerous player in this case so that's why we want to cut out the passes this is also very important in getting better at defending that you try to read the player's mind kind of in what passes could be the most dangerous. Also here, because if the opponent is going to keep possession in that position that we show in these examples, it's not going to get dangerous only if he plays that pass. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial defending. It's a tough one, but this one is going to surely help you out and get more wins in FUT Champions or Division Rifles, or even Draft maybe. Anyways, see you guys in the next one. Ciao, ciao.